Are you or a loved one disabled? Do you feel alone, lost, and confused as to how to win your social security case? If you're watching this video, it's probably because you have so many questions and you're desperately looking for the answers. Hi, my name is Avi Leibovic, and I'm the owner at In Benefits for All and the lead attorney at Avi Leibovic and Associates. Over the course of my 20-year career, I've overseen the processing and screening of over 500,000 disability cases, working with the largest hospitals, neighborhood clinics, primary care physicians, and even individuals who had no access to care at all, my strategies for how to win the case have made me one of the top experts in social security law in the entire nation. My life and my career were going great. And then one day it all came crashing down. It started first with some abdominal pains. And before I knew it, I'd been admitted to the hospital several times and I required multiple surgeries. I found myself unable to work and disabled and in desperate need of my own benefits. I understand exactly how you feel. I was in your shoes. And I'm going to take you through the process and help you and give you everything that I know so that you can win your case. I'm recovered and I'm back at work. And I have a newfound passion for helping disabled people because I myself have been there too. Call our office today for a free screening and to see how we can help you with your social security case. At the same time, enjoy these videos and webinars that we've prepared to you to help you understand how to win your social security case. Hi everyone, this is Avi Leibovic and you're watching another amazing webinar brought to you by and Benefits for All, where we teach you how to win your social security disability case without having to pay the costs of an expensive attorney. We've just crossed over into the border of Missouri. It's been a long day, just through Kansas, into Missouri, a lot of driving, but meeting a tremendous amount of great people, a lot of locals, and getting a feel and a flavor for the personalities, for the uh, feeling of the towns, for the way that the communities, um, whether they're the small ones that you pass through on the road or whether they're the larger ones that you see off of the freeway, it's, it's really um, an amazing part of America where someone like me who spends all my time in California or in New York doesn't get to see all that often and I'm very grateful to be here. The topic today is going to be the win rates, the approval rates for the state of Missouri. As you know, we're going state by state, one at a time, right? From the west coast to the east coast, from the north to the south. And we're going around and we're going through each state and meeting the social security personalities in the offices and the district offices, as well as the ODARs and making introductions. We're going ahead also and we're analyzing state by state um, the differences between the liberal uh, approvals versus the conservative denials and unfavorable decisions. I think it's important with each of you, because there's so many of you who are watching this video, um, that you have an understanding of what you're up against in your state. Clearly, many of you have gone ahead and you've downloaded the, the, the webinars, you've taken the time to review them, you've learned the process from the application, the initial application to the reconsideration, to the hearing. Many of you have gone ahead and you've learned about the different forms that you need to fill out and the offices that you need to submit it to, whether it's the um, local district office or whether it's the DDS office, the Disability Determination Services, or whether it's the ODAR office, Office of Disability Adjudication Review, where the ALJs, the Administrative Law Judges, hold the hearings. As you know, many of these forms will generally be submitted through the ERE, which is the Electronic Records Express, the electronic way of submitting it. But now that you've watched those webinars and you know how to submit, how to complete the forms, how to submit the forms and where to submit them, some of you are probably sitting at home now and saying, well, okay, well, what are my odds of winning? What are my chances of winning? And that's what this webinar is about. We're, we're not going to talk about um, any other state except for just Missouri right now. So this is for my friends in Missouri. So let's jump into it. The first thing that we need to clarify is I just said a moment ago that generally the process for applying for Social Security Disability Benefits has three primary steps. The initial application, if that gets denied you have the reconsideration, and if that gets denied you have the hearing. I know, as we've said so many times before, that there is a Social Security Appeals Council where if you 
don't agree with the ALJ's decision, you can appeal it to Appeals Council. We've also said that there's a federal district court where, again, they could review the Appeals Council decision. But for now, for purposes of this uh, webinar, we're not going to talk about the Appeals Council and we're not going to talk about the federal district court. We're just going to focus on the primary three, which is the application, the reconsideration, and the, um, and the uh, request for hearing before an administrative law judge. Now, in some of the other webinars, we've talked about the concept of what we call a prototype or a redesign office. What does that mean, a prototype or redesign office? Well, you need to understand this if you live in Missouri because your state processes Social Security uh, applications very differently and your process for appealing is very differently. Here's the story, okay? As I remember when I was younger, there was a show uh, on the E! Channel, the entertainment channel, it was called uh, e! True Hollywood Story, right? Where they would go ahead and they would take either a music band or a musician or some type of famous actor and they would say, the E! True Hollywood Story, right? The behind the scenes look at, you know, your favorite, uh, you know, mu musical personality. So I'm gonna give you the E! True Hollywood Story on Social Security and Missouri, and here it goes. A lot of people are applying across the country. Not that much money in the uh, bank, right? In the savings account, so to speak, of the Social Security Administration. More money is requested, right, through the budgets. Every year the budget is renewed, some year extra money is given, some year extra years money is not given, but the bottom line is there's not enough workers, there's not enough judges, the process is taking too long, there's too many people applying, there's a ton of things going on which is causing a tremendous backlog. So Social Security Administration said, you know what we're going to do? We're going to roll out a prototype or a redesign model. And what we're going to do with this model is we're going to try to save money. Now I'm going to try to save money. We're going to try to save money and try to process the claims a little quicker. How are we going to do that? Well, you know what we're going to do? We're going to cut out that middle step of the reconsideration. Instead of the regular format of an application, a reconsideration, and then a hearing, we're going to go ahead and we're just going to go application and then hearing. You say, whoa, that's not fair. I live in Missouri. Why are you cutting out the redesign on me? I should get three bites at the apple instead of two bites at the apple. Well, Social Security says, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We are going to cut out the recon, but we're going to stick something in that's called a pre-decision interview, right? A pre-decision interview. What does that mean? That means that ordinarily in any other state, you would submit your application, you would submit everything that you need with that application, and then the district office would make a decision on the income, on the resources, on the residency, and on the citizenship. The Disability Determination Services would make a decision on the medical part, right? And in every other state, at that point, if, you don't, if they don't want to prove your case, they will deny your case and they will send out a denial letter without talking with you. They'll send out a denial letter telling you right away it's time to request a reconsideration. What SSA said, you know what we're going to do for all those states that have a redesign and a prototype office? We're not just going to deny it at application. We're going to get the information. Once again, the district office is going to do what they normally do, which is review the residency, the citizenship, the income, and the resources. And DDS is going to review what? They're going to review the medical uh, uh, exhibits that are submitted, the medical records. But rather than just deny you without speaking to you, what we're going to do is we're going to save money by cutting out the recon, and instead we're going to put in this pre-decision um, interview. What does that mean? That means that rather than just deny you, we're going to have our worker pick up the phone and call you. And they're going to introduce themselves and say, hey, this is Social Security. We've reviewed your application. Uh, we have some questions and we have some problems and we'd like to call you in for a pre-decision uh, interview. Now this is actually a really, really great opportunity for a lot of different reasons. It's a great opportunity because the reconsideration level in other states, it could take again eight months or so, six or eight months, number one. Sometimes four months, Social Security say, oh, six to eight months is too long. No, sir, we do it in three months. It's not true. It's just not true. But what's going on in the other states with these reconsiderations is that, excuse me, the denial rate is so high, it's like 88% nationally. 88% nationally. Imagine you submit 100 reconsiderations and 88% of them get denied. How, what type of odds are those? Well, those are terrible odds. The, the odds of you winning are so slim, 12%. And the reason for that is because really Social Security during the reconsiderations is trying to weed out 
and they're trying to separate, right, the, the truly disabled from the, no, not really disabled. They're trying to separate the ones who really need help from the ones who are, well, it'd be nice to get a check of extra money, but they're not really disabled. So what do they do? They make the reconsideration very high denial rate. All the bad cases drop out. They get denied because no one wants to continue going to hearing. And they're left with the really good ones that either get approved the application or the marginal borderline ones that were almost there that those can go to hearing. It closes the backlog. It saves money with uh, extra employees and the process has been shortened because there's no longer a reconsideration. And it helps the claimant, you, get your decision quicker by having a pre-decision interview right, right after the application. So once again, you submit your application, district office makes their determinations, so the disability determination services make their medical decisions. Hopefully you get approved one, two, three, and they send you the approval letter. But if they don't go ahead and they don't, can't approve you right away, what do they do? They call you up and they say, hey, we're reviewing your application. We have some questions, it's borderline. We want you to come on down. We'd like to have a conversation with you to tell you what we need in order to approve your case. Now that's awesome, it's awesome. Because if you follow the other webinars that I've given, right, we've talked about how I encourage all of you, right, because you don't have an attorney representing yourself, right, you're saving all this money. I encourage all of you to pick up the phone and call the district office once you submit the application and introduce yourself and say, hey, how are you? My name is Avi Levick. I submitted an application. You're my worker. Great. Terrific. Here's my number. Here's my contact, my emergency number. You know to reach me. Fine. Do me a favor. If you have any issues relating to residency, citizenship, income, or resources, don't deny the case. Call me up. Tell me what you need. I'll get it for you. I'm going to work with you as a partner. You need a bank statement? I'll get you a bank statement. You want a payroll stub? I'll get you a payroll stub. You need proof of citizenship, proof of residency, whatever you need, just tell me. I'll get it for you. I also said that you should call up the DDS on a regular application. And again, introduce yourself, find out who has your claim, your case, and say the same thing to the person. Hey, it's Avi Leibovic. I just got off the phone with the district office. They're taking care of their residency, citizenship, income, and resources. And I know that you are the person who has my medical records. So here's my number. Here's my contact numbers, my emergency contact numbers. I don't want you to lose me. And I don't want you to deny the case. I want you to tell me if there's something that you need, an extra medical record, an extra lab, an updated x-ray, if you needed proof that uh, my assistive device, right, my walker, my cane, my crutches, my back brace, my knee brake, my nest brace, my oxygen tank, if you need proof that it's um, prescribed by a doctor, I'll get you the proof. Whatever you need, you tell me, and I'm going to work with you at DDS to get you what you need so you can approve my case. That's what I recommend on a regular application because I want regular people to go ahead and get approved at the application earlier on. For Missouri and all the other states that have a prototype or redesign office, we're kind of doing the same thing. You're introducing yourself to the district office, you're introducing yourself to DDS, and at some point, like I said, before they just deny the application, they're going to call you up and they're going to say, we want to have this pre-decision interview. And everything that I just spoke about, which happens in other states and other district offices, is going to happen in your state. You're going to go down, you're going to meet the person, they're going to interview you, and they say, well, we kind of looked at your application, and well, we like some of it, but we don't like all of it. We need some of it to uh, be a little bit more recent. We need to have this. We need that. And you basically go ahead and you, it's not negotiate, but you work with them and they don't just deny you one, two, three. They give you an opportunity to provide what's needed. They give you a time period. And if you can provide what's needed, you know what happens? You stand a very good chance of getting approved at the application level. If you can provide what's needed, then you have to remember it's a prototype redesign office. So when you finally get your denial letter after your pre-decision uh, pre decision interview, this denial letter will not tell you to file a reconsideration. Instead, it will tell you to go straight to what? Straight to a administrative hearing before an administrative law judge, right? Instead of requesting a reconsideration, you would file the form to request an administrative hearing before an administrative law judge. The way you will tell is everyone in Missouri does not have a recon, but you can confirm again from your denial letter that everything goes straight to hearing. But hopefully, if you listen to what I'm telling you from all of these webinars, you're gonna get it approved right at the application level, assuming that you really are truly disabled. So let's look at those numbers and let's see how the nation is stacking up uh, on approval rates and then let's see how Missouri is stacking up. So I don't really know um, what to say in, in, in regards to Missouri because as I go through the different states, there are some states that really have dramatic, dramatic uh, fluctuations between what the nation is uh, getting approved and what that state is getting approved. If the national average, which it is right now on applications, the approval rate is 32.4%, right? 
the approval rate is 32.4% on applications. Then really, I've seen some states where the approval rate at, um, at the application level, sorry, is higher. And I've seen some states where the application rate, approval rate is lower. Missouri, on the other hand, is kind of almost pretty much exactly where the national rate is. 32.4 of the cases, I'm referencing the notes over here, it's a little easier than a piece of paper at night. 32.4% nationally of the cases are approved, but in Missouri, 33.1 is approved. Okay, so it's almost 32.4 versus 33.1. It's, it's, it's a smudge, it's right over there. So with that in mind, you're pretty much on par with the state. Now on the appeals, at the hearing, it says that the national rate of approval is 56%, right? 56% of those cases that go before a judge are gonna get approved. And again, in Missouri, the, um, the appeal approval rate is 59.7. Again, it's only a 3.7 uh, 3.7 point difference. So you're pretty much at the national average and uh, you're on par with what everyone else is doing. I just want to give one more point over here and that is the amount of time that it takes for you to get your hearing. Many people don't realize, they think, oh, okay, I'll submit my request for hearing and I'm sure I'll get before a judge in like two months, three months, four months. Wrong. I wish that was the case. Nationally, the average wait from the time you submit your request for hearing, not from when the application starts, from the time you, you submit your request for hearing, the national wait is 12.5 months. It's more than a year, that's a national average. Missouri, again, is right on par because you guys are a little quicker of 12.3 months. Now that's pretty good. I've seen some states where they have to wait 16 months, 17 months. And I've seen some states where you have to wait, you know, not as long. So Missouri is really exactly with the national average, not too high, not too low. Um, all the way through the applications. Again, there's no reconsideration here. It's the same rate as the hearings as a national average, and it's the same with the national average in terms of waiting for your hearing date. So what does that mean? I just threw a whole bunch of numbers at you. I just threw a whole bunch of data at you. I'm standing at a sign in front of Missouri, and you're probably sitting on your couch wondering, so what does that mean for me? Well, what it means for you is like this. It means you're right in the center. They're not coming down too hard, but at the same time, they're not kind of like giving it out. They're not de coming down too hard and denying everyone, but at the same time, they're not really giving approvals to everyone. And it seems that they're really actually looking very closely at everything that you're submitting and making sure that everything is exactly the way that they want to see it. You know, you have some states where they're going through the medical records very quickly, and maybe they're not looking at it, and that might result in either in some cases a very low approval rate, or in other cases a very high approval rate, because they're not really looking at the medical records all that much, or the forms. Here it seems that certainly they actually are reviewing it because you're, you're right there in the center with everyone else. So that means for you. Let's slow it down. Through these webinars I've taught you, one at a time, piece by piece, how to go ahead and number one, fill out all the forms for application and or fill out all the forms for hearing. I've also taught you how to fill out all the forms of reconsideration, but since you have no reconsideration in Missouri, I've done a little bit to prep you as for this pre-decision interview, right? So now you have all the forms for application, and since the average is right in the middle, you need to work pretty hard to make sure that your forms are filled out correctly, that they're legible, that they're submitted timely, right? The worst thing that you want is to, let's say, lose your application, meaning lose, like have, a, have a denial, an unfavorable, meaning you couldn't even work it out with the pre-decision interview, but really you are disabled, but you submit an untimely, let's say an untimely uh, request for hearing. Can you imagine you only have 60 days or 65 days, depending on how you count on the calendar. You only have a certain amount of days to submit the request for hearing. You need those benefits so badly because you need to uh, get your SSI money to pay for your shelter, to pay for your uh, food, to pay for your utilities, and to go ahead perhaps and to pay for medication or maybe an assistant. You need that money. You can't mess around. You need that Medicaid. If you're applying for Title II, right, SSDI, you need to have your money that you've paid into the system. You've worked all those years. You took off your payroll. It's time for you to get paid. And on the SSDI, you don't get Medicaid, but within 24 months, plus a five-month waiting period, 29 months from your onset date, you can go ahead and potentially you can get Medicare. So you need your Medicaid, your Med Medicare. This stuff is very important. Can you imagine if you were really eligible to get it, but you submitted your, your, your request for hearing you know, on the 66th day, 
on the 68th day, on the 70th day, you blew the whole thing because you didn't pay attention to the clock. So you need to really be focused. You need to be on the ball. If you're using a smartphone, put the dates in, in the calendar. Keep a list of everyone you've spoken to. Keep a paper trail. Every time you've called an office, this is the number I called. This is the date. This is the time. This is who I spoke to. Your paper trail of who you spoke to, what actions on your case you've taken, is going to help you navigate to a successful and ultimately a favorable approval. You need to go ahead and you need to make sure that everything that you're submitting, everything is timely, everything is correct, everything is perfect. And again, I don't know if you're disabled or not, that's between you and your doctor, but at least I'm telling you, I am telling you the process, the procedure. I'm helping you, imagine a big, uh, it's, it was actually Halloween two nights ago, okay? so. Imagine, you know, Halloween and you're going through a, a, a maze, a corn maze, and everyone's dressed up in their things, and you're trying to find your way out of the maze, right? Some of you have been in those big um, corn stalks, right? The big, the big corn mazes. They're very high. You can't see what's going on. You're totally lost, and they're enormous. And, you know, there's a guy sitting on a high chair, and he's kind of pointing you how to get out in case you get lost. I want you to imagine I'm the guy in the high chair who's sitting up higher, who can look over the maze, and can see who's lost who's not lost, and I could tell you, okay, you need to make a left, you need to make a right, go straight another two times, then make a right, then go around the bend and you're gonna be out. I'm telling you how to submit the stuff. I'm telling you where to submit it. I'm telling you how to complete it all. I'm telling you in different webinars to keep getting ongoing medical records, to keep getting ongoing treatment, to make sure your prescriptions are updated, your labs are updated, your x-rays and other imaging is updated, to make sure that everything is submitted from every source that's treated you. I don't want just your medical records submitted from the primary doctor that you go to. What about the clinics? What about the hospitals? What about the specialists? If you're in prison, what about the prison records, the correctional facility? If you're a vet, what about the vet, uh, the VA records? If you had a workers' comp case and there's another attorney who has, uh, from the workers' comp case, a workers' comp attorney, he, ha he or she has uh, extra uh, medical examinations on you that was done in the course of the workers' comp case. Did you request those? You need to request everything everything that is pertinent to the dates, to the dates that you're applying for. Does that mean, like if you're, if you're 50 years old, do you need to request the records from when you were 12 years old and you broke your leg? Of course not. But you need to request everything that is related to your medical condition and that is relatively timely for the time period that, what for the time period that you're applying for. There's gonna be some situations where uh, you may be applying for just a year, right? For a year before the application, if it's SSDI, the retro, or moving forward, but you may want to request medical records because it shows the length, it shows the building of your medical records, the building of your medical condition, and how your medical condition is deteriorating little by little, okay? So the point is like this, to my friends in Missouri, you can do it. You've purchased this webinar and you're watching this webinar because you don't want to pay the cost of an expensive attorney, and I get it. 25% or $6,000 is a lot of money, and I'm gonna show you how you can win this case without having to pay that money. You're not too high on the approval rates, and you're not too low on the denial rates. You're right in the middle there, which means you need to be, keep your eye on the ball, and you need to stay focused in filling out the forms, and submitting them timely, and making sure they're legible, and making sure everything is complete, and following up with the worker at the district office, and following up with the worker in DDS office, at the pre-decision interview, finding out exactly what they need, you need to keep a log of who you've spoken with and where you spoke with them and how to get back in touch with them. If you can't get in touch with them and they're not calling you back, you need to get in touch with their supervisor. You need to request all your medical records from everywhere. And you need to submit it. And you need to keep going to the doctor. Don't ever stop going to the doctor. If there's no medical records, you're not going to go ahead and you're not going to win your case. You must have those medical records. You must. No, there's no, very simple. No medical records, no money. All right, was in the old day, no tiki, no washi, right? You don't have a ticket, you can't pick up the cleaners. No medical records, no approval, no check. Keep going. And if some of you say, well, I can't, I, I don't like to go and I don't have transportation, I gotta wait online and the clinic gives me a hard time and the ER doesn't wanna take me. I can only tell you what you need to do to win. It's up to you to find the inner strength to go and wait in line at the clinic, to go, if necessary, to go to the ER room and get what you needed. I can only go ahead and encourage you to go and contact your doctor, even though you haven't been there in a while, to get updated examinations. Because if you don't have those records, you're gonna lose. But if you do have those records and you do everything that I've said in all these webinars, I think you have a pretty good shot, maybe not right away initially in winning the application, but when you have a pre-decision um, pre interview and they've cut out the reconsideration and you can have 
dialogue and you can communicate with the person looking at your case and say, okay, okay, listen, I really need to win this case. I'm sick. I don't feel well. I have responsibilities. I got kids. They're going to evict me. I need to win. Tell me what you need from me. You have to open up your ears. You have to listen to what they say and you have to get it for them timely and stay in contact with them. Okay? You can do it. You have to believe in yourself. Now, if it's too much and you find perhaps physically that you can't handle it and that maybe you've taken on more than you uh, bargained for, or maybe you were strong in the beginning, but for whatever different reason, your health has been deteriorating or it's been just difficult, the fatigue, the medications make you tired. There's a million things that could happen. That's okay. Call our office and hopefully we can help you out. My name is Avi Leibovic. I want to help you. I've represented over 100,000 claimants in the course of my career, okay? I've seen all the issues and I'm confident that my, me and my team, my team and I, can go ahead and move you forward from uh, from being lost and unclear of where to go to moving forward and getting approved. You just have to believe in yourself and you have to say, you know what, I can do it, okay? And if you can't do it, you call our office, you call another attorney office or another uh, you know, non-attorney representative and hopefully someone will be able to help you out. Until the next time, right, come check it out, www and benefits for all. Click on the links on the side of the page to check out any recent updated webinars. Always keep checking the sites to see if we're including more webinars. And I'm going to teach you how to win your Social Security disability case without having to pay the cost of a new attorney. All the best, and I look forward to speaking with you soon. Thank you very much.